Hi, it's Tracy from Glitter Thumbs, and welcome to Cricut Explore Step-by-Step, Step Step 7, How to Create a Layered SVG from a Colored Image. Now, Inkscape is a great free program that we discussed in, in the Cricut Explore Step-by-Step, Step 5, and you're going to be using this in that program as well. What I did is picked a beautiful pumpkin that was a colored image, and it was a very simple image, but I'm going to go ahead and save that and open it in Inkscape. Click on OK, and the first steps are really going to be the same or similar to tracing a bitmap and um, uploading that, that first layer using a coloring page. So in this step, you're going to select the item that you've uploaded, and from there, you're going to go to Path, and trace bitmap up on the top. Now this is where it gets different. Instead of going up to the very top and adjusting the brightness cutoff, you're gonna go down below, which shows the different layers of colors. Now by telling the computer or the program that I want four layers, I know that I'm not going to need any more than four layers because if you look, there's the orange, the green, and the black. But if I go down to three layers, that green is taken away. So I know I wanna do four layers, and that's gonna be a lot easier for me to assemble it once I get it into a design space. I'm gonna click on Update and then OK if I like it, and I'm going to set aside the SVG that has now been created. From there, in order to ensure that I have the proper image, I can always try to break it apart and see what happens. If it does nothing, that means that that's the original and I can right click it and delete it. I can move this new SVG onto my main screen right here. And from there, it all looks pretty good. I'm ready to go. So all I need to do from here is move it where it needs to go, push file, save it, it'll automatically save as a um, SVG, excuse me, <laughs> it's Sunday afternoon. And uh, from there, we can upload it into Design Space. Now, I tend to save all of my SVGs initially on my desktop so that I can see them really quickly. And in this case, I'm going to open up Design Space, sign in, close the fact that my computer is 7% low, and I'm going to log in. Always good to log in. I'm going to create a new project. And then I'm going to upload an image. We are not inserting an image because it's not an existing image. We're uploading it into the system. This is a vector. So I'm going to click the one on the right to upload the vector. And from there, I browse through to find this SVG. I know it's an SVG because when I look at it, it says pumpkin, but it also has that Internet Explorer icon on there. So that's another reason why I know that I'm picking the right one. I'm naming it pumpkin and putting in my keywords for pumpkin and fall or holiday or whatever you prefer so you can find it really well. And I'm going to go ahead and upload it. There's my pumpkin for me to play with. I can click on it and put it into design space and you can kind of see what's happening here. Number one, it saved it also with that white square in the background and we don't need it. So I'm going to click on the eye and it will erase that white square background. Everything else you can kind of see if I get rid of the green, then the, the orange is going to show up. If I get rid of the black, then both of those are going to show up as well. Um, I can't really see specifically the layers other than the um, the orange right now, but if I were to click on it and ungroup it, then I'll be able to see the different layers. Now I'm going to delete this pumpkin and I'm going to upload a more intricate pumpkin from there. So you can kind of see the different layers that can be created. I found this really nice fall pumpkin that I'm going to show you right here. And as you can see, there's different shading in this pumpkin. There's a lot of different oranges in there. Now, this is where it gets a little bit trickier. When you have these intricate images, you can see the light orange, the medium orange, and the dark orange just in the pumpkin alone. Now, as a scrapbooker, I do have a lot of different colors of paper, but I don't think I'm really gonna have enough paper or colors or shades in order to make this work. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to select the image and I'm going to, I'm just playing around here, so don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm just trying to look at everything, but I'm going to select and I'm going to trace the bitmap. Now under the color section, if I decide that I want to do only, who knows, six colors, 
I can always push on six. And in this case, I only did, oh goodness, is that three? I can't see, it's a smaller preview right there. But you can see how it turns it black and white. I don't want that. So that means I'm going to have to increase my layers so that I can create that 3D, or not 3D, that layered look. Now this one, I'm increasing it until I can kind of see what it's going to look like. Um, if I decrease it to the point where um, it just doesn't look right, then I increase it. And so once you get to the point where all the layers look pretty good, see how that green's popping up all of a sudden? I'm updating it in between and trying to figure out what I can get away with. Because as we know as Cricut users, we can always change the colors eventually when we get into design space. But if you have too many layers, it's going to be very frustrating for you to um, put it together. Now looking at the original versus the SVG on the right, you can see that it's a little bit less intricate. However, it still looks pretty darn good. Now I'm gonna set this aside and just kind of look at the two side by side. Now imagine all the different layers that are going to be involved in this. And I think that this is as intricate as really you're gonna want it to be. I'm gonna file it and save it. And then we're going to I call it a fall hump, a pumpkin just to make it you know easier to see. And let's play around with it on design space so you can kind of get an idea of what everything's going to look like. I'm going to vector upload. I'm going to pick fall pumpkin. Look for the Internet Explorer icon, which some of you, by the way, in design space um, Facebook, a lot of the Facebook pages have asked about uploading SVGs that they download from these groups. It will always show up as an Internet Explorer icon or Internet icon. So that's your idea that it is going to be an SVG. There is going to be a uh, future class on importing SVGs, so just keep an eye out for that or subscribe to the uh, YouTube videos so that you know when that's going to come out. But hopefully that'll help you a little bit. Here's my pumpkin, and I have imported it into Design Space, and I'm going to open it up a little bit. Now look, it's actually more intricate than you think. Now I can get rid of that white, or I'm actually going to ungroup it so you can see all the different layers involved in here. Look at this. Now, some of these little cuts you're not necessarily going to use. And like I said, the more intricate of an image that you use, the more of those tiny little dots you're going to get. But if you kind of train yourself to look more at the, the, the big picture and realize that, you know, some of those small pieces, yeah, they might waste a little bit of paper. But for example, that black leaf outline, I really like that. I'm going to keep that. All the rest, not necessarily so much. Um, you know, there's something for you to think about, but like I said, it just depends on your picture. So when you're figuring out what you want to download or upload or turn into an SVG, really pay attention to the intricacy of some of these images because it's going to be a lot more difficult. However, when you just do a basic upload in Design Space, I'm, I'm sure you have in the past, um, it, it gets to be pretty time consuming. So regardless, this will be a lot faster. From there you can click on go and I'm going to show you this white square that shows up on this pumpkin. It'll take a moment but you'll see the screen preview here. All right so we've got that that green, we've got the darker, we've got the dark orange, we've got the light orange and I'm going to go ahead and go down. I can see the light orange, another light orange background. Look at that white automatically that white layer right there is going to pop up. So let's go ahead and take it away by clicking on the eye. And from there, it'll look pretty good. Now you can go in, you can change the colors. You can change a lot of things about this SVG, but that is a really great start, I think, to having you realize that it is very simple to create your colored SVGs from JPEG images. Like I said, the main thing is just to pay attention to the intricacy, the details involved in those pictures. I thank you again for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you learned a little bit today. And thank you again for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos or for ordering more inspiration or more tutorials. You can always go to www.glitterthumbs.com. And thanks again for watching. Now the next few classes are going to be coming up very quickly. They're going to be talking about importing SVGs into Design Space and specifically SVG cuts.
We're also going to be talking a little bit about um, importing or creating your own SVGs in Inkscape and focusing a little bit more on excluding images out of cutouts. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. If you have any questions or need to learn a little bit more about something maybe not covered, feel free to shoot me an email as well. It is going to be on the glitterthumbs.com website and I'd be more than happy to give it a shot. Thanks again. You have a great day.